This video is not suitable for our haters. <laughs> Hi students, I got COVID. Welcome back to our creative art class. So hope you guys can stay healthy and not get COVID. Hey mom, go to home. I forget about what I'm gonna say. <laughs> Hi, go to home. Oh. What is the COVID in Chinese? Hi, Tong Hao. Welcome to Oh, Welcome back to our creative art class. Since we all can't go out during the lockdown, let me give you one tip that you can do to improve your art at home. 歡迎大家回到我們的創意藝術課堂由於疫情的關係我們都是要留在家裡抗疫在這裡我會給大家一個小小的建議幫助你們在家裡都可以進步我現在展示的是我的 What I'm showing you right now is my sketchbook I usually draw every day Some of the work can be a detailed sketching and some of them can just be some studies this habit helped me improve a lot on my art journey and the sketchbook is where I find my idea when I want to create a big painting. This is my this is not the only sketchbook that I have. I have a lot of sketchbook. Sketchbook is always a good record to check your progress. So what am I gonna do today is to create another sketch on this sketchbook about the pandemic. 我們就在這本速寫簿上做另一個作品有關於疫情的。Before I start, I try to take different reference pictures. 在開始前,我拍了不同的照片做參考。And finally, I choose to do this one. The medium we are using today is oil paint, and we also use liquid original as the medium. This is a fast drying medium. Today, liquid original. Before I start painting on my sketchbook, I paint gesso on top of the paper to make a waterproof layer on the paper. 我用了Jessel在张纸上面做了一个防水的layer。This is an essential step that I usually do when it comes to more complicated painting. Drafting the composition helps me have a better understanding of the painting and reducing the chance for me to make mistake. So in this process, I'm not gonna go too detailed. So basically, I'm just trying to use basic shapes and lines to try to figure out the relationship between different objects in the scene. And after that, I'm trying to add different values to the drawings. These values help me understand a little more about the depth and also the volumes of the objects. After drawing the thumbnail, 
I start sketching on the sketchbook according to my plan. At the initial stage of the sketching, I try to use more straight lines. What I usually do is I always try to forget what object it is. I always force myself just to look at the positive and negative space of the object. This step is quite difficult for the beginners because beginners always just try to draw according to what they think the objects looks like. The hints for making a better drawings is always try to observe. Forget about what the thing looks like in your mind, but try to observe what shape it is, what degree of the line it is. Okay, even for me, I messed it up already here because I was trying to rush myself up. I was trying to sketch as quick as possible here. That's why I'm not observing at all. That's why I made tons of mistakes here. So I erase some of the lines and try to fix as much problem as possible. But the fact is, the problems were too much. That's why later I try to just paint over it and try to fix everything during the painting process. So don't learn from me. Okay, this is a bad example. So what I usually do for the painting process is I always try to paint from the back to the front. In this stage, which I call block in, it's I try to block in most of the area with the big brushes and try to fill in the last detail as possible. Instead of adding too much details, I try to just focus on colors and the big relationship between each object. After blocking the background, I started blocking in the main character. In the whole stage, I try to loosen up my brush stroke, try not to add too much details, and try to observe the main values and also the main colors. After coloring the hat, I started coloring the most difficult part of the painting, which is the transparent wrinkled. Even though I said it's difficult, but actually, after you know about how to do it, it's actually not that hard. When you're painting the transparent object, there's a few things you have to think about. First thing is the color of the object. Second is the things behind it. It can be the background color or it can be something that's glowing behind it. The third thing is reflection. You may reflect the environment color. Maybe it's the sky, or it can be something in the background. So in this painting, the ring coat is on top of the t-shirt. So I have to show the color of the t-shirt. I was wearing a black t-shirt because the ring coat is blue. That's why after the ring coat covering on top, my t-shirt reveals dark blue. After painting the colors showing through the raincoat underneath, I started add some highlight on top of the raincoat. But in this stage, remember, don't make the color too bright. In here, you need the color to be a little desaturated. In the blocking stage, you have to preserve the darkest dark and the brightest bright of the painting. The next interesting thing of the painting is I have to start reviewing some skin tone under the raincoat. When you do the skin tone, you can't make it too saturated because it is underneath the raincoat. So I was adding some blue to the skin tone, which it can make it desaturate and also add a little blue to it. After working on the raincoat, I started working on the face. Mixing skin tone might always be difficult for students or even for me sometimes. So here, let me tell you some tips of mixing skin tone. 
in most of the skin tone. Actually, it's not that saturated. So, you have to make the color a little desaturated than what you think. In this painting, first, I try to mix orange and yellow together, which makes a perfect orange. And then, I try to add brown and also blue, a little white, and try to desaturate the color. In my color palette, I rarely put black in it, because black can be too strong and overwhelming. So instead of adding black in my palette, I try to mix my own black. What I try to do is I mix burnt umber, which is a brown, and also ultramarine blue, which is a blue, in the ratio of 1 to 1. So in here, I try to conclude some of the dark area, which is the shadow part of the face. So it makes me easily to present the three-dimensional form of the face. After drawing the face, I start drawing the mask. For this mask, which is a white mask, I try not to use pure white here. Because, as I mentioned, in this blocking stage, I try to preserve the darkest dark and the lightest light. So in here, I try to use bluish gray. Just like what I mentioned, I try to use the combination of ultramarine blue, burnt umber, and white to mix the grayish blue. In here, you can see that I try to just put marks on a back plane to show the three-dimensional form and also the transition of color in different planes instead of adding too much details. Adding details too early might easily ruin the three-dimensional effect of the painting. After I worked on the face, I go back to work on the hands. After lighting up a bit of the background, I went back to work on the face. So now, I was adding more details than before. And now, I was working on the gloves. In the painting, you can always see that I try to separate the light and the dark. I always try to simplify the shadow shape, which is really important when you're trying to construct a three-dimensional feeling. After working on the glove, I try to work on the last object on the painting, which is the sanitizer spray. A common mistake that people always do is to make the bottle too dark, but the local color of the bottle is actually really bright. It's close to white, so try not to make the shadow too dark. In here, I try to use purplish color, a purplish gray. So finally, it comes to the last part of the painting, which is refinement and detailing. In this stage, I try to use more saturated colors and also I start using the dark tone and the lightest tone. So now, I was adding the final highlight of the painting. I was using thick white paint to do the highlight, because the thick paint can actually reflect a lot of light, which shows a lot of sparkling feelings. Okay, let's take a look at the final artwork.
Thank you for watching the video. See you. 我哋下次再見啦，拜拜。